bull or bear for tomorrow. Oh, she's throwing up a bull. Well, she's right half the time. So am I. <laughs> Good evening. Wow, what a beautiful evening it is. We've got uh, a sunset here in South Florida. Obviously, you know, we face the east here in uh, beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. And uh, I've got the live Hillsboro cam up right here. Uh, I'm down here in this area. You see that's lacking any high rises. That's the one nice thing about Lauderdale by the sea. No high rises allowed. I think they limit it to three stories on the coast and five stories inland. Uh, so while you'll see all kinds of high rises down here, you will not see them in Lauderdale by the sea. And like I said, what a beautiful night. You wouldn't even, if it wasn't for the flashing light, it looks like a still photo. Uh, take, how, uh, take a look at how calm that water is. You don't see that very often. Uh, including on the inside right here. There's actually a little reef that goes out there. And the Fresno lens of the Hillsboro Lighthouse uh, doing its thing. One of the last real lighthouses out there that uses a real Fresno lens and uh, pretty cool stuff. One of my customers came in, by the way, told me that uh, him and his gal took a, a tour where they drive up here in a boat, they pull up to the beach here and they take you up to the top of the tower and uh, talk about supposedly, supposedly this is one of the brightest natural Fresno lens lighthouses in America right now. So pretty cool stuff. All right, well, we're not here to talk about local uh, uh, history or ge uh, geography. So uh, let me get into uh, today's video, which is uh, today's quote, uh, which can you guess? Can you guess? <laughs> you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I know there's some caveat to that rule, which is um, with the right doggy treats, you probably can, but uh, um, <laughs> generally speaking, it's tough to t teach uh, old dogs new tricks. And where I'm going with this, I'm going with the CME and the big commercial banks, which we're going to talk about, and the collusive um, manipulative behavior we see in these markets. Uh, obviously, there's no new tricks that you can teach those old dogs because they pull the same old stuff all the time. But let's talk about uh, spot prices right now. Uh, last, yes, you know, basically all uh, yesterday, uh, obviously markets were closed. Today, New York markets were closed, but we've got the uh, aftermarkets open right now. I'm not sure if that's the Globex markets or another one, but uh, uh, Globex markets are 23 hours per day, also run by the Crimex family at CME Group. Uh, but 1916, about par value. Uh, from where, let me do a quick refresh, see if that makes a difference. And by the way, uh, spots are brought to you courtesy of CCE, um, <clears throat> which is one of the oldest uh, teletype systems, well, I'm calling it a teletype system, started out as a teletype system, one of the oldest uh, rare coin dealer and precious metal platforms in the country. They've been around forever, owned by uh, different corporations over the course of years, but uh, 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 courtesy of CCE Group, really cool uh, uh, subscription that I've been involved with. Uh, for a long time. Always like to give credit where credit due is due. And uh, look at silver 2431. Where is that compared to the close on Friday? About the same. Uh, this is Friday's close, by the way. Again, remember markets were closed today. And uh, platinum at 1066, uh, a couple bucks lower than where uh, it was again on Friday. Markets sideways right now. Kind of curious to see where they go tonight and tomorrow with the uh, so-called stronger dollar. And stronger dollar doesn't mean buy more shit. Stronger means stronger against the rest of the fiat turds out there. That's all that means. So <clears throat> let's get out of spot prices. Uh, and I'm going to say it like I've said it the uh, three, you know, 600 times. Oh, I don't know how many videos I've done. 650, 700 videos now. 600 plus videos I've said over and over. These prices are gifts. 1900 sub $2,000 a gift, sub this price is a gift, this is price is a gift. And, and some of you are probably going to say, Brian, when, you, when we say that these prices are not a gift anymore, well, not until they get up into the uh, minimum double up areas <laughs> am I going to say they're not a gift anymore. Anything less than a double up for gold, silver, and platinum, uh, especially, especially silver, is, uh, is uh, 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 buying it on the cheap. <laughs> I'm just saying it. These metals are so grossly underpriced in so many different ways, shapes, and forms, especially silver. Uh, again, that's my opinion. I'm sticking with you. It's all done because of manipulation and other nonsense. And let's get into that. My favorite <clears throat> uh, author or my favorite uh, writer, blogger, whatever you want to call him when it comes to uh, uh, how the uh, silver markets, primarily silver markets, are rigged, who rigs them, how they do it, and uh, all kinds of good stuff like that. Uh, paid subscription site, about $30-something a month uh, or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, if you're in the business or you're buying and selling large amounts of silver, uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile subscription to buy. I'm going to 
go over a couple of things. Ted Butler has always talked about, uh, 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 again, who the manipulators are. And we know that the big commercials, they, he talks about it all the time, the big commercial traders out there, uh, uh, the commercial banks that are trading in the COMEX. And uh, one of the things he's always talked about is how these big commercials cheat the market. And who are they cheating? Well, they're cheating us overall, but the real target of the big commercial, like J.P. Morgan's, when, you know, when they're trading out there, and the, uh, I think Bank of America even, Citibank, I believe, and other banks, I forget exactly who the big commercials are. I should know that, but we don't talk about that. I don't really read much about it. I just know they exist. Uh, and how do we know they exist? It's on paper, man. It's in the, uh, it's in the uh, 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 COT reports. It's in the uh, trades that they do. It's all a matter of fact and data that we're all privy to. Uh, but Ted Butler explains it here real well. For some of us, it's, you know, some of us, even to me, sometimes it's Greek trying to understand the COT reports. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Butler talks about big in this week, week's report is the physical demand is still quite large. This is why he explains that we, you, there's still a large short position in SLV right now. And the large short position in SLV uh, has nothing to do with someone shorting it or that uh, people are capitulating and selling SLV. It has to do with silver that's short on their market or their short physical silver to put into SLV. That is the reason they're shorting it. Uh, again, it gets convoluted and, 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 and kind of um, confusing to understand. But uh, Ted Butler is exactly right. The uh, uh, short position in SLV has nothing to do with capitulation. It has everything to do with the lack of the physical metal to put into the SLV because the S SLV requires uh, that their shares or whatever you want to call them uh, are backed with real silver. And that's henceforth, like I said, is why you're looking at this uh, short position. To get into the details of that, you'd really have to read Ted Butler's article. And if you're new to it, you're going to have to read it 10 times over. And if you're like me and you kind of understand it somewhat, you only have to read it three times. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> despite my complete, and this is in his recent newsletter, and I want to give him props here. I hope he doesn't mind sharing a few uh, uh, paragraphs with you because, uh, you know, it's all pertinent. And I think Ted Butler, you know, besides he does make money off his newsletter, he genuinely, genuinely has a sincere interest in uh, ending this manipulation uh, by these big commercials. And, and he can't do it on his own. The best way he can do it is by spreading it to people like myself, uh, who I spread it to you guys and everyone out there. At some point, when everybody knows the casino, which is the CME Group Comex, when the CME Silver, and when everybody, when a, not everybody, when a large enough percentage of people start to realize that these markets are freaking rigged, it is poison. It's poisoning the CME well, because not only are people going to question whether the silver market is legit? They're going to start questioning CME's other trillion dollars worth of markets as well, <clears throat> and that's something the CME Group cannot afford to happen. All right. So maybe they're being a little proactive and, and stopping the uh, collusiveness on the silver markets. That's tough to say. But meanwhile, if you haven't read this already and, and, and tuned out my blabbering and read this already, let me read this to you. Despite my complete confidence that the managed money shorts were destined to lose, I'm still surprised a bit how heavily short they got back then. All right. Now, t Ted's talking about uh, uh, the short positions when I believe when silver uh, was in the teens and stuff like that and it shot up to the 30s. All right. Uh, and this goes back 2019, was it? 2020 or something like that, I believe. Uh, but let me continue on with Ted's uh, uh, writing here. Now my surprise is in how lightly they are on the long side. I'm starting to think that both the formerly heavily short and current light long positions of the managed money traders are not coincidental, but the result of a very intentional ploy by, who else? The collusive big COMEX commercial crooks. And uh, he goes on, oh, sorry about that. Let me reduce that a little bit. I'm not sure what button I hit. Uh, boy, let me, there we go. Hang on, hang on. Can I do it? Oh, no. Too much, too much, too much. See, I need it real big. I can't read it. Uh, Ted goes on to say, I haven't touched on this in quite some time, but the managed money traders conduct and execute their buy and sell orders through the very same commercials which trade against them. Remember, folks, this battle of the short and long positions, this collusive behavior by the big commercials, isn't against you or me personally. They could give a flying hell about the small amount of money that us retail silver guys own. Their battle and their rinse and repeat and cheating is done on the managed money traders, okay, who deal, in, deal by uh, probably algorithms and they have certain uh, 
guidelines. You know, when it gets to this point, they sell. And the, and the commercial, the collusive commercials know this. And they've been caught actually cheating in this game with the managed money traders. Despite that, you know, my saying right here, this, is, this saying is exactly what uh, uh, I'm getting into right now. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, obviously, obviously, um, because the same very people who have allowed themselves to be hoodwinked by the big commercials is the managed money traders. They've allowed this to happen over and over, and you can't help but think that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but can you? Is the managed money people waking up? Or is Comex realizing that, uh, uh, CME Group realizing that the Comex silver price could destroy the credibility of all their other markets, which are way more valuable to them than just the silver market? Maybe, but that's my speculation. Maybe not necessarily Ted's, but let's uh, move along here and read. Hang on a second here. And anyways, how, there we go. And as Fred says, I've been touched on this in some time, but the managed money traders conduct and execute their buy and sell orders through the very same commercials which trade against them. You know, again, the commercial banks. All non-clearing members of the COMEX must conduct their trading through a designated clearing member. Therefore, every managed money trader must conduct their trading through what is typically called a prime broker. Example of prime brokers would be include JP Morgan and about every other large commercial. You get where this going to? That the very same people that uh, 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 are responsible <laughs> Uh, for driving the silver market and the gold market up and down, mo mostly the silver market up and down, um, and who they get, who they're cheating is the managed money traders. They, they are doing, they have all the propriety information for the managed money traders. Now, I'm just blown away that these managed money traders that uh, Ted talks about right here, after four decades, haven't figured out this ridiculous fucking game that, oh boy, there we go. My video will get two, two views now. <laughs> but this ridiculous game that is played in the crooked Crimex casino that the CME group runs with big collusive uh, traders and money manager traders, old dogs that have never learned a lesson in four decades. Again, or, or have they? Uh, therefore, every managed money trader must conduct their trading through what is typically called a prime broker. That's kind of similar to, <clears throat> Uh, you know, playing cards with someone, and the guy across from you, you traded all your information and your card data with the guy, the guy you were playing, uh, uh, playing the same game as you, all right? That's kind of what they're doing there. Uh, on its face, Ted says, it is perhaps the most incestuous, incestuous and conflict-prone relationship of any that exists in the financial world. The thought that one set of competitors, the managed money traders, must conduct their trading through their most fervent Competitors, all right, I hope you're following me here. The commercials should make your hair stand on edge. The broker, after all, is extremely well-versed, and the broker would be the, the uh, big uh, commercials. Uh, the broker, after all, is extremely well-versed in the possible financial detail of every trader which maintains an account at the broker. You know, the know your customer rule and all that other stuff, and how the customer trades. I, su I suppose if it wasn't for the prime brokers also being the chief counterparty rivals of the managed money traders, the thought of a serious conflict might not exist. Obviously, that's, that obviously that's not the case. And if you're not at trouble that, uh, if you're not at all troubled that such a conflict does in effect exist, exist, you better check to see if you have a pulse. Ted's exactly right. Um, you know, again, the, the the prices of silver being snookered down, hammered down, monkey hammered down, whatever you want to call it is not a result of, uh, of a world cabal of uh, uh, evil people trying to get you and I out of silver or trying to get you and I uh, uh, to capitulate our small amount of silver. It is a criminal enterprise that's happened for decades, which is nothing more than a crooked casino where one set of players, the commercial banks, are allowed by the casino, the CME group, to cheat another set of players which are the managed money traders. I hope I explained that as well as I could. You know, folks, I've been talking about manipulation for such a long time. And in fact, if you don't, if you, if you haven't noticed, I've suffered manipulation burnout. <laughs> I have. After you talk about something after 600 plus videos and you've explained it over and over and over, it gets kind of, you know, uh, so I have suffered some manipulation burnout and haven't been talking about it much other than just to call them a bunch of crooks. And this price is super cheap. But, I, this was a really great couple uh, paragraphs here that I wanted to read to you that really explain it, especially for you new folks out there that aren't familiar with what's going on and how it happens. 
Great article by Ted Butler, January 14th. Um, can't read it for free, you have to subscribe to him, but uh, Ted Butler, yes, I do have a man crush on the guy as far as business stuff goes when it comes to silver. Peter Schiff, another guy I like, good article this uh, weekend. Uh, the recession everybody denies exists and is going to get worse. Uh, a couple quotes on here are really good article on, uh, uh, again, uh, Zero Hedge by Peter Schiff. Uh, uh, you can probably copy that uh, Earl right there if you can read the whole thing. Or uh, just type in uh, Peter Schiff, Recession Everybody Denies, and type in Zero Hedge. It'll probably take you right to this link. Free to read, too. Uh, one of the nice things about Zero Hedge, besides the ads you got to read, but uh, you can read this for free. Uh, good quote here. Uh, Peter says, some people in mainstream seem to think of big stock market rallies in the cards. Peter said that optimism is unfounded. I would have to agree with them 100%. I don't think it's going to be a good year for stock market. I think there are going to be some stocks that do well. Unfortunately, most Americans don't own those stocks. And I believe Peter's probably correct on that. Not going to get into details, although uh, this is not homework. Everyone hates homework. Suggested reading. I, I suggest you take a look at this article right here. Uh, most of his stuff is pretty good. And uh, Peter also makes a comment down here, quote, first of all, a lot of people think inflation is going to come down. It's not. I think the decline is, and again, what a great statement here if you're going to put it in one sentence. I think the decline is what is transitory. And I've said that for the last 600 videos. Uh, the, you know, not in that way. I like that way he said that the, the decline is transitory. But what I've been saying is we're just moving up to the next level like we did in the 70s and 80s. We're moving away from, you know, 2 and $3 gasoline, uh, uh, maybe even from 4 and $5 gasoline. Maybe we're moving up to, uh, uh, an, you know, 7 as the new level. Maybe we're moving up to food prices being, not maybe, we are. This is not uh, 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 going backwards, folks. Only the, only the transition upward is temporary. We're moving to a do, new, different level of inflation. It's never going back. Peter's exactly right, um, and that's my opinion as well. I think we're going to be making a new year one, uh, making new year over year highs in inflation before the year end. And last and not least, I'm just giving you all the juicy quotes here. The recession that everyone, uh, everybody, everyone denies exists is actually going to get worse. So we're going to have a weaker economy and stronger inflation. The markets are not expecting that, and neither is the Fed. You know, <clears throat> the only thing I got a question is, you know, is the Fed really that stupid? Sometimes, you know, they say intentions equal results. And I had a friend of mine many, many years ago, I don't know if this is a common quote, but he said results can also equal intentions. You look at the results and you know what the intentions were. Well. Maybe the Fed isn't all that stupid. Maybe, maybe, the, you know, the the in the results that we're seeing right now were and are the intentions of the Fed. I think sometimes that we don't give these guys enough credit. Maybe they are trying to crash the economy, folks. Maybe they are trying to crash the stock market. Maybe they're trying to do all these things. Maybe Peter's got it wrong on this one. I mean, I just think it's possible. You know, the Fed has limitless amount of money, algorithms, programs resources that they can use. You know, maybe they are six st steps ahead on the chessboard. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm giving them much too credit, L much, much too much credit. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Maybe, are they as dumb as a fox or are they indeed really dumb? <laughs> uh, good article by Peter. Um, I want to get into a thing I haven't showed you guys in a while. Most of you new folks here haven't seen me put up macro trend charts. Man, these are awesome charts, man. Uh, I'm going to just give you a quick overview. Again, uh, suggested reading, not homework. Uh, look at all the charts. Just type in macrotrends.net, uh, precious metals, Dow to gold ratio, gold to oil ratio, HUI to o, uh, Fed balance sheet versus gold price. Man, there's some great freaking charts here. Make of charts what you will. I look at charts as like, you know, a map of where you're going, a map of where you've been, not necessarily where you're going. That's the way I look at charts. Even though so, some people charts like to read charts as a way of uh, looking into the future. I don't. I just think, well, again, sometimes you have to know your past to know where your future might go. So, uh, but in great charts, gold prices versus oil. The reason I brought this chart up and uh, remember to tell you guys about this because this came to my mind here um, is the uh, gold to oil chart. Folks, now, a lot of people are talking about that the uh, Russia is tying the price of oil to gold. Uh, well, let's take a look at the numbers here. Do we have a corresponding uh, uh, movement with gold and oil? And I'd say, I'm pretty confident to say that if you take a look over history, there has been a tight correlation between the price of gold and oil. And sometimes they've kind of diverged and gone the opposite direction. Again, if you take a look at the price of gold here in 2000, 
uh, 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 eight, you know, gold, <laughs> uh, hold on, oil, oil, $140 a barrel, sorry about that, and uh, gold sitting around 890 then you go here and you see that gold's at 1744 gold's at $98, but for the most part, historically speaking, uh, these two commodities have kind of fall, you know, falling or, or, or followed each other, that's a better way, followed, followed each other. Um, my English, my vernacular is not that good, so pardon me. Uh, let's see here. I always try to correct myself, though. Uh, oil, $80.55. Uh, currently today, November 2022. This is not too far in the past here. And uh, gold sitting at $1,768. Um, so what does this tell us? Yeah, these two items do, these two things do move in tandem, um, but not always. Again, you can see the extremes here when gold... But the problem here is I think when we saw, it's tough to say, we saw oil at $127 in 2008, and we also saw uh, uh, gold uh, at, uh, well, well, actually, if you think about it, too, gold pretty much near its all-time high at that point, too, $909 in 2008, and then making its rise up. So, you know, really, if you think about it, you could lay these charts over each other. Gold just has a delayed reaction to that spike in the oil prices here. Uh, delayed by what, two years? <laughs> Anyways, make of it as you wish, but it is an interesting correlation between the price of gold and oil. And considering that we're talking now that Russia's uh, got a oil-backed, uh, uh, gold-backed oil, whatever you want to call it, uh, ruble that they're talking about, or, or backing uh, oil with a gram of gold, again, uh, uh, that's not new news. That's been something that's been going on for a little while. Uh, and what is that all about? It's about de-dollarization too, folks, which is the worst thing that ever happened in this country, is uh, kicking uh, China out of the dollar and kicking Russia out of the dollar and kicking all the people that we don't like or agree with out of the dollar. Worst fucking, well, there I go again, lost another uh, 100 viewers. <laughs> worst thing uh, that our politicians or our agencies in this country ever did was weaponize the U.S. dollar. But then again, you know, I just said that the Fed is probably like foxes, you know what I mean, so dumb as a fox. Well, or maybe they're smart. And I'm kind of betting that they're as dumb as a fox and that what we're seeing, again, the intentions, the results, you know, uh, higher interest rates, um, uh, worse economy and all this stuff is really the intention of the Fed, all right? I, I honestly believe that, I do. I don't think they're that stupid. I think they get the resources and they know exactly what they're doing, all right? And they don't mind coming across as dumb because then they can say, oh, we're making a mistake. Oh, sorry, we're making a mistake. But I really believe their intention is to crash the economy. I believe that uh, there's a lot of things behind that. Uh, but no less, when it comes to government, uh, uh, do I believe that their intentions is equal results uh, and the results have been stupid and dumb? No, I believe our government and our agencies are genuinely stupid. <laughs> That includes a lot of our politician. Listen, you can be a politician and be a brilliant constitutional lawyer, but when it comes to everything else, a complete fucking dumbass. Uh, that's what Barack Obama was. Maybe a bright constitutional lawyer that didn't care about the Constitution, but when it came to everything else, economics, totally fucking clueless. Uh, but that's not like any other president out there, too. Just because you're successful at one thing does not make you successful at others. One of the things with Elon Musk, you know, the belief that, yeah, he can do everything. No, no, no. In fact, I've seen him make a few dumbass comments out there politically. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, he may have his genius in a lot of ways, and I give him creds and, and all that stuff. Good businessman to some degree, uh, thinking things through and other things, but, you know, no. Just because you you got a genius at one thing or you're really good at one thing or a couple things does not make you a genius at everything else, uh, and that's a fact. Hey, what are the best deals out there? Well, listen, I can tell you that because it's something I do for a living for since 1977. I've been buying and selling gold, silver, and platinum bars and coins, uh, wholesale and retail. I know this real well, better than any of the other talking heads out there. And yeah, I'm, I'm uh, blowing my own horn. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm good at this. I can tell you what the best deals are and what to stay away from. I'm going to keep it real simple tonight. Nothing's changed over the last week. The premiums are still the best deals on there are gold. Uh, uh, Atmex, not Atmex, Atmex sucks. I'm sorry, no, their bars suck. Great company, don't get me wrong. And by the way, I'll beat their prices. Atmex, SD and JM Bullion, 
uh, and I beat the local guys down here. So if you live in South Florida anywhere and you want to visit our store, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays, we will beat all the locals and we'll beat the big boys online, including Atmex, SD, and JM Bullion, uh, all companies that I respect uh, because, man, they, uh, I believe they're honest and I believe uh, uh, they deliver the product. And uh, uh, I want to beat and be competitive against good guys. And when I said Atmex sucks, I didn't mean them. I hate their bars, though. I hate anybody that, I hate anybody. I hate when people put their name on their bars. Like why would I, as a retail coin seller, want to resell this to a customer with Atmex's name on it and their phone number on the back or a website? I wouldn't, all right? Uh, so that's what I don't like uh, when they put their names on bars. And that's the first thing I saw when I opened, the, uh, opened up the page here. Uh, but great company, they're all good companies. And again, I can beat their prices. Uh, as far as uh, best deals, again, uh, Perth Gold Bars, Pamp Gold Bars, Valcombi Gold Bars, um, uh, all these gold bars right here, if you can buy them for spot plus 70 bucks and no more than that, don't pay more than 70 bucks over. In larger quantities, I can sell them for less as well. Uh, but in small quantities, you shouldn't be paying more than spot plus 70 bucks on these. Uh, as far as uh, uh, what's the next best thing? Gold bars, gold eagles. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go to the extreme end of that, which is one ounce gold eagles. They're as cheap as they've ever been at spot plus 112 bucks in uh, small quantities. Uh, again, don't be paying more than 112 bucks over uh, for Gold Eagles. I think Buffaloes it might be seven, five bucks more than that, or seven bucks more than that. But 112 bucks, don't pay more than that. It's too much money. Uh, even at 112 bucks, uh, think about this: uh, you could buy this product right here, plus uh, what is it, an ounce and a half of silver thereabouts. Uh, again, that spread's tightened up a lot. You could buy uh, that right there, gold bar, plus an ounce and a half uh, of silver for the same price that you buy a Gold Eagle for. Uh, Maple Leafs, they're under 100 bucks. I think they're spot plus 90 bucks or spot plus 95 bucks or less. Gurgaran's the same way, 90 year old. Don't be paying more than that. As far as silver goes, Silver Eagles, stay away from folks. Prices are still way too high. They're in that spot plus nine or $10 range. What are the best deals out there? There's, the best deal out there is still 100 ounce silver bars. Um, and uh, if I remember, hang on, oh my gosh, I forgot what the premium was. 100 ounce silver bars, there we go. This is the best deal out there. If you can afford to buy a 100 ounce silver bar, the, the price per ounce, the pound, you know, uh, the bang for your buck, the price per pound is way better with 100 ounce bars at spot plus $2.75, actually, folks. Uh, so I think the premium's gone up a quarter in the last week or so, but still a good deal. Uh, but you know what? For a quarter difference, this is the truth, you can still get spot plus three bucks for one ounce, good one ounce silver round buffaloes and generic rounds and stuff. Spot plus three bucks, quarter more than 100 ounce bars right now. Uh, it's tough to beat that price. I think it's a good deal. So one ounce, uh, uh, one ounce silver bars and buy one ounce uh, silver, one ounce bars. Oh, those bars, uh, but rounds. Let's put in rounds because nobody hardly makes bars anymore. And we don't get asked for them ever. Uh, everyone wants rounds, but there you go, buffaloes in all the different forms. Spot plus three bucks, again, I think that represents good value versus uh, uh, absolutely terrible value, uh, which is silver eagles at spot plus nine or ten. Unless you're buying them for your collection or as gifts, they're horrible investments at spot plus ten. Horrible. I'll say it a hundred times. Horrible, horrible, horrible. <laughs> horrible. Stay away from silver eagles. Love the product. Premium still sucks, folks. If you got them, hang on to them uh, because it doesn't even worth selling them right now because the the spreads are so wide between the buy and sell price, uh, but again, I would not recommend buying them any way, shape, or form. Stay away from Silver Eagles for sure. All right, let me get into yesterday's yesterday's video. I owe you all a humble apology for not doing a video on Friday or Saturday. Um, I was planning on doing it Saturday, and then I got a late start in the morning. Had to go, you know, as you know, uh, I'm dealing with my father's estate. My father was a coin dealer. So I had to go into his old shop and uh, start cleaning out a lot of stuff, and that took most of Saturday. And by the time I got home, I just couldn't pump one out, man. So anyways, my apologies. I'm suffering a little uh, burnout, <laughs> so to speak. So if I'm missing a few videos here and there, uh, that's why. Uh, forgive me for that. It, it happens to the best of us. All right. Uh, Thursday night's video was just as pretty, though. Take a look at that. In fact, it's got me curious to see. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Oh, you see that area right there with no uh, lights? That's Lauderdale by the sea. No condo lights. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let me, uh, at least I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me get into uh, Thursday night's video and any questions that may have been asked. 
I would like to thank everyone for commenting. Make sure you hit that uh, share button, that like button, and that subscribe button, that little bell wherever it is on your page. That little bell will remind you if you hit it when my new videos pop up so you'll be informed when the newest ones come up. Uh, sort by newest first. Give me one second here. Hmm. La, 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 la. Oh, don't get dizzy. I get dizzy when I go too fast like this, too. Motion sickness. <laughs> Actually, I don't really get motion sickness. Um, Show Pro is indeed first, second, and third. Fourth, William Fox. Thank you, guys. Derek Ger uh, Garrigas says, love the quote. Yep, lots of <laughs> wussies out there. Lots of wussies out there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I can throw them out there sometimes, Derek. Uh, Linda says, you're correct, not in the world, in the system of things that have been predicted for a long time. Absolutely. Uh, hey, I'm going to give my thumbs up, by the way, to everyone here. I don't usually thumbs up everything, but I'm going to thumbs up all you guys. Uh, thumbs up there. Never Linda, nor bar uh, Borrow, ever be young Hamlet. <sighs> man, I, I know it's uh, Hamlet, <laughs> I guess. Oh, man, I, I respect people that uh, remember this stuff and can uh, say, that, you know, uh, especially remember the quotes um, or can quote this stuff. Harris Tiller just saying AP lit. Uh, AP lit, oh my gosh, lost me. Over my old brain uh, for sure. Uh, AP lit, what does AP lit mean? I'm sorry. Uh, Juan Vigil says, uh, uh, great show once again, though baby boomers seem to be more focused on providing for their families and being responsible. This generation seems to be selfish, lazy, and think everything should be handed to them. Keep stacking people, wake up to that old shit moment. Yeah, and folks, I can't tell you, this is true. We are all, all you stackers, you old time listeners and you new guys out here, um, as long as you don't plan on dying anytime soon, and none of us plan on it, I know that. Um, yeah, funny I said that, but uh, uh, you know, if, if you're fairly healthy and you have intentions on being here for some, some time and it looks good as far as your health goes, uh, we are all gonna have that precious metal oh crap moment when we wake up in the morning and we all say oh crap you know what i mean oh oh shiite <laughs> uh i'm trying to keep my my views up a little bit you know by the way uh this particular format right here does now ding you for any curse words so you know they're not going to put your uh, stuff out in the feed and uh it obviously explains why my stuff doesn't get out there <laughs> uh thanks juan i appreciate that perpetual war that's man that's what we've been going through perpetual war anybody that says that to me that just that statement, perpetual war, I know they get it. And Mike's big ep epiphany gets it. Uh, Christopher McCorm McCormick, I didn't go to Coin Show, that was the other Chris. Oh man, there's another Christopher? <laughs> I know. A couple of, sorry about that. I confused my Christophers, and uh, I appreciate all of you, all my Christophers out there, and my Gentries and Daisies and Mike's. Uh, Gentry says, Amen. Brother, hope to come visit you with your silver purchase. That would be nice. Know your peas. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Exactly. Uh, kind of has a little bit to do, a lot to do with what we talked about uh, for the quote on Thursday night, last Thursday night's video. Uh, Daisy says, great updates. Wish well in 2023. You too, Daisy. Uh, wish you well as well. Uh, George Montgomery says, heard this one years ago. Oh, man. Listen, hang on. I said I was going to give you all thumbs up. And let, let us do that. Uh, 11 thumbs up on that one, another thumbs up there, uh, thumbs up on you, thumbs up for you, and of course for you, Daisy, and a uh, thumbs up for George Montgomery. I uh, heard this one, uh, that is a great quote, uh, does not constitute, no, I uh, heard this one years of piss poor planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Yeah, that was my quote for Thursday night. People seem to approach you for help when it will be extremely costly to do so. Yeah, that is true. People usually wait till everything blows up before they come to you. Uh, Silver Liner says, Brian, I can't see the central bank bringing inflation down 2%. I can't either, Silver Liner, because it's too profitable for them to have high inflation because it makes debt cheaper. I see them bringing inflation down to 3 or 4% and call it a new normal. Yeah, it's just a reset. The real reset probably is the reset in prices across the board. The reset is going to be uh, what you pay for food, what you pay for gas. It's going to be the new norm. Again, the only thing transitory is the... Uh, uh, transitory uh, uh, structure of this increase itself. It's going to get to a level and just stay there, and it ain't never going back. Absolutely, silver liner. John Schroeder says, was in Iraq, uh, shithole when I was 21 years old. What a mess. Made me a stronger person. Absolutely, dude. And uh, by the way, thank you for your service. I do appreciate it, and as do many of you others out there. Uh, I may come across as anti-war a lot, and I am anti-war. 
most of the time the only people that benefit in war are the politicians and the military industrial complex at the expense of mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and young men everywhere and young women. Uh, thanks, John. I appreciate your comments. Keep uh, stacking there, brother. Michael Matthew says, even if they throw you down the stairs, I'll come and you know, search for the video. They do. They throw me down the stairs. I know it. I know it, man. Uh, Anonymous Andy says, explaining gold and silver to other people can get annoying, but it has to be done. True. That's what I do here. You know, I know I get burned out sometimes, and I just go blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, you know, 600-plus videos, it, it does get a little tough to talk about it over and over and over. Uh, but not tonight. I liked uh, Ted Butler's quote. It made it easy. Uh, Christopher Ward says, sometimes a fellow has to tell it like it is. Keep on articulating. Thank you. I appreciate that as well, my friend. Uh, Ty, oh, my gosh, I'm missing my, uh, there we go, there we go. Thumbs up and another thumbs up. Uh, there you go, thumbs up. Christopher Ward, sometimes a fellow has to tell it like it is. Keep on articulating the thumbs up. Uh, Ty for the shootout. Thumbs up to you, Christine Napolitano. Actually, boomers, thank you, uh, uh, Christine. I appreciate that. Uh, 46 to 64, I'll remember that if I just invert those numbers, 46 to 64. Uh, thanks for uh, reminding me who the boomers or what generation they're from. Uh, that was probably Wednesday night's video, we discussed that. Um, thank you, Alex, appreciate that. Linda, uh, excellent viewer you are, an excellent commenter as well. Thank you so much. I did click that video, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Paul Wilson says, uh, I suspect the social security levels required will not be there in just a few years. Uh, the 17 euros have garbage jobs wearing copy. Yeah, yeah, again, that was a big part of, uh, was it Thursday or Wednesday night's video when I discussed that, you know, the demographics are looking really, really bad for the economy. You know, when the baby boomers go, 46 to 64, as Christina pointed out, you know, when all that housing goes and uh, 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 all that housing becomes available, tons of housing, all the resources become available because we don't have much people, but all of a sudden we're taking care of a lot of older people now and our medical it's going to be a clusterfuck, trust me. We're just starting to really see the boomers go down now. And I hate to say it that way, I'm a boomer. But we're starting to see the results of the boomer going down now. Um, and it's going to be not pretty in so many ways. Again, discuss that on Wednesday or Thursday night's video. Blackbeard says Rob F. may be No, I think Rob F.'s cool. He just uh, happens to know when to uh, get that firsty out there. Joe McDonald's Klaus, Klaus Squab will pick up the slack. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Hey, fish guy. Here's a uh, content suggestion. Could you share the genial thoughts of people you uh, encounter in retail environment? Would it would be interested uh, 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 shape opinion on? Thanks from West Virginia. Um, the general thoughts of people I encounter in the retail environment is they they come in mostly. Most of them understand that this is a hedge against a falling dollar, and it's a good safe place to put their money. And they're never going to wake up in here and bankrupt. So most people are coming in here to do as wealth preservation. I've always talked about wealth preservation, probably in 300 of my 600 videos. Uh, it's about wealth preservation. And I think most of them are coming in for that. And uh, I haven't seen any capitulation. You know, uh, there was a video out the other night, I think it was Yankee Stacker. I was kind of surprised. I didn't watch the video, but I saw it pop up in my feed. I don't want, trust me, I, I don't get a chance like they don't probably either. You're so busy doing your own videos. You live, eat, and sleep the stuff that you don't get a chance to go out. You know, when I come home, I don't go out and look for coin videos and precious metal videos. I've lived it all day. <laughs> it's like a plumber. I'm sure plumbers don't come home and watch plumbing videos at night. I'm the same way. But I did see Yankee Stacker come up with something, and they said, I think there was a comment about uh, the reason silver soft right now is because of capitulation, uh, and retail capitulation. And I'm not sure if there was tongue-in-cheek, but it couldn't be anything further from the truth. There is no, I don't want to say no, that's be a lie, but there is little to very little retail capitulation in any whole even wholesale capitulation in any way shape or form in the retail physical markets it's not happening uh, uh, I haven't seen it even at these higher levels uh, that is not the reason that the uh, 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 retail prices uh, on uh, you know the spreads have come down I think the reason the retail spread prices have come down again people are with these higher prices they're gun shy and they're waiting to see if silver I mean if you're a seasoned silver buyer, you've seen how many times they drive it up five bucks, and then what do they do? Drive it down five bucks. No one wants to buy on the up five dollar move, and that's where we're sitting right now, is everyone is waiting for the crooks in the COMEX markets to slap it down again. The question is, can they do it and will they do it again? Seems likely, and I can't blame people for wanting to wait for it to go down again, hence the reason why premiums are down, but I think it's, you know, at some point, it's just not going to happen. Again, Ted Butler keeps talking about the data pointing to the fact that 
we're getting close to that point where it's going to run to the upside big time. But let's see what happens. You can't trust these crooks in Comex. Um, Welco says, no one comes for us. Uh, yep, can't argue with that. Um, evil one, yes, we do love it when you read through the comments. Thank you. I appreciate that, Philip. Pete's repeat says the six P's. Previous planning prevents poor. Man, a lot of you, I think you're service guys, aren't you? People in the service. Isn't that a saying? Is that an Air Force saying or Army or something? Previous planning prevents piss poor performance. I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong and let me know in the comment section. James Barry, Alan Greenspan went on National Deep Toe. Uh, everyone, what are you crying about? You don't have much money anyway compared to the rich. Uh, there's something sick and funny about that comment. Thanks, James Barry. I really appreciate that. Victoria Hilltop hitting a, uh, uh oh. You know, you know what that is when you see 13 replies on, in my and, and my comment section? You never see 13 replies unless it's a crypto moron. Let's hide them from channels. That way they think they're posting, but we'd never see them. Um, Lucy Bean says, here's a rabbit hole to go down. How bad will it actually get? On a scale between the little house and the prairie and the road, how bad will it be? Uh, some cities right now provide an element, but the hunger element hasn't taken off. So though snap inflation cost adjustments are not so far, maybe we get a repeat of Indian Pakistan partition. Ooh, Lucy, that's some deep stuff right there. Absolutely, I can't argue with that. Um, hmm, a little house on the prairie and uh, how well. Uh, very deep question. Um, I think it's just going to be... We, it's going to be a continuation of what has been going on since 1913, except in a uh, very hyper-accelerated way, which I think we're seeing right now. Is hyper-accelerated? That's not a double negative, no, but <laughs> uh, in an accelerated way. I think we're going to see things happen a lot quicker, including higher prices, the cheapening of the dollar, the economic system getting screwed more and more. I think we're just seeing it in such an accelerated fashion, it's more noticeable. It's like, you know, watching a kid grow from infant to their teens, you know? It's hard to see because it's a slow process and you, you're there all the time. But just imagine all of a sudden one day you wake up and your teen went from nine to 13. It'd be a lot easier to notice and that's exactly what I think we're looking at right now. Uh, thank you, Lucy, thanks for commenting. Uh, Glenn says, should I buy pre-33 in gold instead of, uh, no, 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 pre, anyone that suggests you made buy, buy pre-33 gold, any of the, uh, YouTube channels or any of the uh, telemarketers or stuff you've been reading, uh, brochures that are telling you to buy pre-33 because of gold government confiscation. They're trying to con you out of your money. Now, is there anything wrong with pre-33? No. It, it's a pricey, it's somewhat collector value somewhat, uh, but confiscation is such bullshit. I've done so many videos on them, Glenn. No, 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 no. Unless you like old U.S. gold coins and you want to start a collection, no. Stick with gold bars, Krugerrands, Eagles, Maple Leafs, that kind of stuff. But I'd buy Eagles before I brought pre-33 gold if that helps you. And I'm unequivocally right. I'd be happy to, to debate any YouTuber out there, anybody that wants to debate me on an online debate on whatever forum they want, happy to debate them on why uh, they should not be pushing pre-33 gold on people. Uh, again, to me, it's just a profit margin thing by those people. Stay away from them. Look up Sheila Holm. Much love. Oh, man, I'm afraid to look up right now. <laughs> Keep the faith. Uh, clearing it out. Beautiful beginning. Absolutely. Um, thumbs up there. I'm not quite sure when I'm thumbsing upping, but I should be careful. Uh, I'll give you a thumbs up anyway, just because you're a commenter and a viewer of mine. You get a thumbs up automatically because of that. I uh, haven't had a chance to look at that link, so sorry about that. I will afterwards. I'm not quite sure it's going to pop up, so <laughs> you understand my trepidation there. Uh, thank you, though, for watching. Uh, Wayne Wilcox says, you're watching what's happening in the Treasury bond market, the 30-day, 30 30-year 30 inver inverted by two 10-year inversions, 21.6 uh, uh, early Friday morning. Um, the trend on the spread between the two, read more, along with the steepness of the, any price declines we'll see will be temporary before we go into full-blown Venezuela. Uh, interesting stuff. Um, hmm. That the biggest and smartest money in the board is watching, and I'm watching, and they're moving money into gold and silver. Uh, wow, good stuff there. I appreciate it. Very technical, Wayne, but uh, it shows that you're very uh, keen to what's happening out there in the Treasury bond market and how that affects the price of metals, gold and silver. Um, you're one of the technical guys out there that make comments like that as well. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate that. Can't argue with that. All the boomers are buying. Um, it gives them something in common with their kids. I hope 20 minutes so I can buy more credit, really. Uh, I don't know, Caleb. I don't know, man. Uh, to me, it's just fiat, dude. Um, it's just another form of fiat. 
you know, it may not be run by a government, but it's fiat. Fiat is fiat. Fiat has no tangible value whatsoever. Neither does crypto. Sorry, man, that's just my opinion, but I respect everybody and their choices they make. Uh, they want to make. My specialty is in gold, silver, and platinum, not crypto. But personally, I'm not going to be involved with it. Um, Wanda says, I agree with you about foreign wars, which in my opinion are generally about assets for some rich guys. It has nothing to do with American security. Absolutely, if there were any real concerns over American security, there wouldn't be millions of illegals crossing our borders. They sell young warriors on this hero crap. Yeah, that's true, sadly. Um, you know, I watched war movies when I was a kid, glorified war movies. John Wayne, that's my generation. You know, uh, uh, Rat Patrol. <laughs> watching Rat How many people remember Rat Patrol? Uh, um, you know, but it, it's not what real war is really all about. And when you really, as you get older, you realize real war is really nothing more than making people rich. It's true. It's sad, but it's true. Uh, I've been known to try to talk to young enough during when I was a teacher. They weren't getting into my babies if I could stop it. Mm, can't argue with that, Wanda. Hey, thanks for watching. Very important stuff there. You know, wars are not good for uh, anybody except the military industrial complex and the people that profit from that. Uh, large bunch, Bonnie, up to you, Upton, as well. A large bunch to you, whatever that might be. But I hope you have a large bunch. <laughs> uh, well, I came out right. Uh, thanks, Bonnie. Appreciate you commenting. And all of you guys, remember, uh, I'm here in South Florida. Been in this location since 95. Been doing this since 1977. Uh, if you want to buy gold, silver, and platinum in South Florida, I'm the guy to come see. And uh, I can beat the online guys, Atmex, SDJ, and Boy, and again, the locals as well. If you don't live in South Florida and you want to do business with me, I only do limited quantities or certain quantities, minimal quantities, which is 100 ounces of gold and 1,500 ounces of silver or more. Uh, we can do shipping and do uh, 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 secure forms of payment as well. So if you don't live in South Florida and you can't visit us between 10 and 4 Mondays through Fridays, um, you can buy from us as long as you're buying more than 100 ounces of gold, more than 1,500 ounces of silver. Again, if you can't do that and you're in South Florida, I would love to meet you. So if you're ever down here, no matter where you're from in the country and you're visiting, make sure you come by our store at least to say hi. You don't have to buy a damn thing. Uh, but if you want to buy anything, gold, silver, and platinum, we sell gold, silver, and platinum anywhere from a dollar to millions of dollars worth. And we, we're a small store, but quite powerful and quite potent. <laughs> uh, so again, hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a beautiful evening. And uh, I really appreciate all your support and the fact that you guys have been watching and following me and all that good stuff. Anyway, thanks again. And don't forget to catch me at the uh, Collectorama show coming up February 16th to 18th in Lakeland, Florida. Get your free tickets here. Uh, go to the CollectoramaShow.com site, and um, let me see if I can do a, it has all kinds of cool stuff. There's the background for it right there. Let's see if the background works. There we go. There's the convention center, really nice convention center. There's the show, coin, silver, uh, currency, paper money, uh, gold eagle, silver eagle, bleh, silver eagle's overpriced, uh, but uh, uh, antique firearms even, and all kinds of cool stuff. Again, get your free tickets here, uh, February 16th to 18th in Lakeland, Florida. Um, and it's about a four-hour drive from here, about an hour from Orlando, an hour from Tampa, maybe a couple hours from Jacksonville. Uh, but a great, fun show to go to. And uh, it's, uh, what is it, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. Oh, boy. And let me move back over there. Appreciate you uh, uh, staying with me. And uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.